If you imagine, like if you walked into my um, my room where I store tools, I would never let you in there because it's often a disaster area. It, it's very much thinking about how do I how do I want to use this. So my solution to the to the challenge is not to go to the hardware store and buy a new tool, but rather organize your tools and. We're gonna have another conversation about a uh, another profile individual, and I want you to paint the picture for those that are listening and watching. Mm -hmm. And it is the the displaced professional. Yep. I mean that title probably says it all, but uh, entertain us with who they are. What's going on with the displaced professional? Yeah. Well, and 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 there's lots of them. Um, so one of the conversations that uh, that I've had is a, a fellow that um, is a, t a petroleum engineer. Um, I think, to my recollection, about 28 years experience. And I think it was about three years ago, uh, in the midst of this downturn that started in 2014, when his card got pulled and he was laid off. And has that been his experience? This is a downturn, there'll be a recovery. And once that dip was moved through on the upside, he'd be picked up at some point and he'd just continue his career like he had over the last 28 or so years. Not particularly pleasant, but grand scheme of things, not the end of the world. Only a year went by and that hadn't happened. And then it was two and still hadn't happened. And then it was three and it still hadn't happened. And through that, we had maintained our, our, our connection and continued to have coffee. I hosted networking events that he would attend. And still, despite his best efforts and his problem solving ability, which is significant, still really not coming up with a solution to the riddle. And what was really poignant for me is he and I had a conversation around this whole concept of purpose. And I asked him if if this hadn't happened to you, if you hadn't been laid off three or so years ago, would we have even started a conversation about what your purpose might be? He attended a retreat that I hosted on this topic and I said, would that have been something you would have participated in? And he said, no, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had any need to. I had my purpose. I was working. I don't know if I called it that, he said, but I, I was in a job that I loved. I was fulfilled by this work. Why would I, why would I stop? And I'd go back to it today in a heartbeat if I could. But the reality is that there's no back to go to. And so answering the deeper question now became important. What am I going to do with what I know? If this isn't what, it, yeah, then what? Exactly. Because I never had to answer this question before. And I knew it all the way through university. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and combined with that, that he's an adventurer when he's not working. I mean, he does stuff that you look at and think, holy cow, I could never do that. It's stuff you'd watch on outdoor life television or reality shows. And he's just this incredible adventurous spirit. So what did he do? Well, he, he found a, um, a unicorn, a unicorn project that, that seemed to consist of all the pieces save one, which was revenue. Ah, uh, yes. Because um, the guy's got to live. Yeah. And for a host of different reasons, it just didn't come together uh, because the funding model that was there just wasn't going to work, or at least wasn't going to work that way. And so the only thing he could do was move away from it and, and continue his campaign. And, and so that brings us to, to today, and that's kind of where he is. Um, and th that, that story can be repeated over and over and over again. If we think of our engineers and geologists and geophysicists and accountants and supply chain professionals and all this population, and, and now the new population that's coming as a result of the downturn we read about this morning and what's happening with the stock market, and all of these people who are now employed in an energy sector that is changing so rapidly, combined, be, you know, driven by this coronavirus and the the, the market share battle that's going on with Russia and, and uh, Saudi Arabia and, 
you know, the, the commodity trading at a record low. Those are jobs that are going to go away that likely won't come back. So what, I mean, you'd speak <clears throat> of the unicorn project. Yeah. This shit, man, you throw a unicorn in there and most people are like, well, I'm out. I, yeah. well, I don't know what my unicorn is. I, yeah. I don't even know where to begin. Nobody knows how to find a unicorn. Right. A unicorn by nature, and I get this is symbolic, but there are many who, who would make the claim to say, listen, unicorns don't get found. They find you. Yeah. And I would wager this is a very similar interaction. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? Because you're talking about three years, yeah. seeing no line of sight on, on anything that would alleviate the pressure. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to yeah. hold on to. Yeah. What did he do to get to that point, to get to the unicorn? Well, and it's almost like you said, I think when you get to a place where everything you know to do isn't working, everything you've tried is not not achieving the outcome. Um, you're, you've taken on additional things that other people have coached you to do, and I was one of those people, and you tried that and it hasn't worked. Um, you're acting out of faith that these things, if you persist and continue to do them the right way, that ultimately you'll, you'll come out okay and you'll find a solution, and that hasn't worked. Um, that through all of that, as I recall it, um, he was having a conversation with someone and this concept of this, this massive project that required mental horsepower of the, of the type, uh, it was r r maybe a little overwhelming um, and they didn't have any funding, but they needed they needed someone to come in and take over and run it. And that conversation happened ser serendipitously. I just I don't really I don't remember exactly how all those pieces came to be. But do you think there was a way in which he was showing up in the world? Yeah. That allowed that opportunity to happen. Well, it's it's like what happens when you're engaged in relationship building. And a lot of people would call that networking. I call it relationship building because there's an important difference. So you're out there having conversations with all kinds of people. Little segments of what you've said of your personal brilliance are soaking into the person we're talking about mm -hmm. um, and, or that you're talking with and it sticks with you. And then three or four of those people have a conversation with somebody else and the topic comes up, hey, we're, this is something we're working on. We need horsepower, mental horsepower. Don't really know where to go. And then a coin drops for that person and says, hey, if it was you that I'd been talking about, yeah, I know this guy, David. And man, if you've got a tough problem to solve, you absolutely have to have him in the room. He's just going to ask you questions you never would think to ask and come with, and come with solutions or drive you to solutions you never knew were, were within you. And Thanks so for the it was, plug, by the way. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> it was that kind of thing. You're at, at, at www. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> um, so it was one of those, a few of those conversations that triangulated, and, and he, he ended up being offered this opportunity. The, the promise, of course, was the funding was coming, but in the meantime, would he take it on? And he and he did take it on. So it, because he was um, ready to to receive it there was mm. a um i like to call it the listening you know like wh yeah. what are you paying attention to mm -hmm. what are you aware of have you slowed down enough to afford the glimpse of the unicorn that just breezed by you yeah or are you so busy preoccupied with everything that's not working and life's not working and why isn't it working that you just completely miss all the opportunities around you mm. sounds like there was a, 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 a pace, a good pace that he was looking and observing his world around him, knowing that there were some areas of interest that um, piqued his curiosity. Mm -hmm. And then in the conversations that happen in the being with people truly, mm -hmm. those opportunities started to present themselves yep. versus trying to find my opportunity. That's right. I need engineering job. 
Yeah. I'm looking for engineering job. Yeah. There's no engineering jobs right. and you're missing com everything else completely. Yeah, it, this is a crappy analogy, but if you think about all those old home computers that some people still have, or old, old cell phones, if you look at it as old computer, what am I gonna do with this? Other than take the guts out and fill it with potting soil and trailing plants. <laughs> Um, if you if you open it up and start unpacking it, there's an awful lot of wealth within the confines of that plastic, the precious metals, for example. So again, mm. not a great analogy, but there's a lot of stuff in there you definitely don't want to throw out. The uh, the initial impression of it is there's no value completely. Yeah. There's not even any point plugging it in. Right. You can't even get a software update just for it put anymore. It, just throw it in the trash. Exactly. Yeah. Well, in some measure, when you look at this whole population. That's what we have sitting on the sidelines in our province right now. And more of them joining that, that population. So we think of our one friend here who has this incredible brilliance, this amazing way to tackle a problem. He was telling me that he was facing stuff and doing stuff and he looked at it and thought, I have no idea what, to, what I'm doing here. I have no clue how to approach this, but he did it anyway. And in some respects, this is the best job he's ever had. You, Except you, it hadn't paid anything. But. Yeah, totally. Well, and that, that's a critical piece and something to, to obviously be responsible for. But you point to it really, really elegantly in that for anybody listening, you likely don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. in this process of experiencing displacement and trying to figure out what's next. Yeah. You have no idea what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And like many who are uh, in their own rights professionals, you have acquired that level of professionalism, that competence by being willing to step into the oblivion that is not having an answer yeah. to problem X. Exactly. And so from my perspective, those that are on the sidelines need to stop being on the sidelines, stop waiting for the opportunity to present itself and use those muscles that you've acquired and, and, uh, and have been able to solve some of the craziest problems out there, unbeknownst to most of us. Yeah. And in, just in the action of being curious and in the inquiry of like, okay, this is a problem. There are things to variables in this equation. What are the variables like to do that work mm -hmm. uh, and to have conversations with those around you in the, in the place of building relationships and deepening uh, the support of one another, not what can I get from you? Yep. Something shows up, a solution to whatever problems or problem that there is mm -hmm. shows up. And the displaced professional no longer is displaced. So when I surrender who I am, when I give up who I am, I find who I am. Yes. So when I, when I set aside the fact that I'm an engineer, when I, I just sort of surrender my engineering, the need for my engineering shows up. And it, it, I mean, I, I recognize that that sounds bizarre, but for him, his, his exceptional problem solving capability was what led him to this Project Unicorn. Well, and it was by, by and I, I like how you said that. So if we were to pull that apart, um, it was the release of the limitation that is, I am engineer for X, yeah. which is hyper siloed, hyper focused, very, very narrow minded. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing, but in this case, it's very limiting. Yeah but you actually embrace the, the, the fact that you are engineer and what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. So I think another uh, avenue for those is to really look at uh, who are you as an individual, as a professional, what have you acquired? What, what are the things, what is your toolbox? Yeah. Not by measure of, uh, of the, the title that you had for X amount of years, that was, how you used your tools, mm -hmm. but it's, it's actually not about that anymore. It's not about role X. It's mm -hmm. about looking at your suite of services and your toolbox and going, what 
else could I do with these tools? Yeah, I mean, how could I repurpose this tool? Because maybe it's not designed for this problem, but maybe I can apply it this way and then it, then it would work or I'll modify it in some way. Right. So you think of the wealth of wisdom, of brilliance, um, of experience that, that comes to the challenge that, that these folks are facing. There's no question they have the answer to the solution. And there's no question in my mind that behind what's behind their eyes, this, the obvious solution to the problem, which was get an engineering job, a geologist job, a geophysicist job, beyond, behind that is all of this brilliance that's there. There's a ton of horsepower. It's inconceivable that there's no place for it. Right. But the solution isn't easy to find. So getting behind that to start taking that question for a walk. I love these kinds of problems. Okay. Well, let's take off some of the industry focused jargon or language around that kind of problem and see, well, what's left? Because there's always going to be something left. Not everything we are, are known for is a thousand percent reliant on a set industry. That's ridiculous to think that. They're for sure is a way for each of us watching this, participating this, to apply our capabilities, our innate giftedness in a, in a way that may be different than the way we have. Well, and the really great thing about that then is if my skills are applicable in all, all sorts of other areas and all mm. sorts of different capacities, the question that you get to ask yourself at that point is, where do I want to play? Yeah what would have me feel excited to be involved in yeah. versus I got to do this in this industry and, and it's just, meh, you know, it is yeah. what it is and it's, it's what the demand requires. Yeah. Well, you, you effectively get to create the opportunities as they fit for what it is that you're looking for. Yeah. So part of the, something folks could do that if this is their situation, um, for the moment, take the iron ring off. Keep it in a safe place and enshrine it. Like that, they earned that. Uh, and it won't be off for long. We'll put it back on in a second. But take the title away, the, the profession away for the moment, just for a moment. And now, let's imagine we got this green Rubbermaid bucket in front of us, one of those great big, huge honking things. And imagine we're going to go on a trip somewhere, probably a hiking trip. And we don't know whether we're going to stay overnight. We don't know what kind of weather we're going to face. We don't know what we might need. So, but because we have a vehicle that's got lots of room, we're just going to throw everything we can think of. And then once we get to wherever we're going to go and figure out what we're going to do, inside there will be everything we need. But nothing we don't need, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to put sleeping bag, tent, bear spray, knife, frying pan. I'll take my cast iron frying pan because at the moment I'm not planning on hiking anywhere, at least not with a frying pan on my back because mine weighs 40 pounds. Um, and then we get there and we've got all this stuff that we need. Now we can build something. So <clears throat> what I encourage folks to do is think about if I look at a role, if I want to really get very technical about this, what are the things I absolutely need to see in the next body of work that I want to be mine? Um, and think about everything that comes to mind. I've asked this question in, in talks that I've given and people say, well, um, uh, I want work-life balance. Okay. Um, I want a decent income. Okay. I want good vacation. Okay. And then I say, okay, enough of the soft stuff for a moment. I want you thinking about something you, I, could, I would pay you to do. Now what comes to mind? I want to lead a team. I want to solve this kind of problem. And, and then we start getting into some stuff that's, it's quite tangible, things that you might actually find showing up in a job posting somewhere. And so we don't know what that looks like at the moment. We don't know what it's called. And we've set aside the, the professional brand that has been ours that we earned for years ago and for our whole profession, our whole career. And now we start to, we take that lens. Admittedly, it's, it's probably going to feel like a bit of a kaleidoscope. Do you ever look through one of those things as a I kid? Have, yeah. um, so you don't really know what the patterns are yet but you've brought to your conscious awareness the things that are must-haves in whatever next looks like. And inside all of that is who we are as a real person. 
because you and I are not what we do. I may be a professional engineer, but that's not who I am. It's more an expression of what I do rather than who I am, if that makes sense. Yep. And so when we start to look at it that way, you start to identify those, identify those qualities. You start to give a name and life to your, the things that you're capable to do. So this is different than skill. You've taken the industry specificity away and pulled out what you're capable of doing. Capability uh, transcends industry application. Skill needs a specific industry. And now you start to look at, okay, what do I want to build with this? So I've got all this tough stuff. I've got all this material in my workshop that I've been hanging on to forever. I, didn't, I don't know why I was hanging on to it, but now I'm starting to see, oh, well, I could build this. But that's the kind of question now when I know what I, what I really want in my next role, what I want to bring forward, and I stop thinking or fixating on my, my brand title, and I take that for a walk or a beer, and quietly just welcome in whatever comes to mind. Journal on it. So we're talking about journaling. We're going to talk a lot about that. And what is it that I'm noticing that I'm not seeing now? Because there's all kinds of stuff that I'm seeing, but I'm not noticing it. So now we've turned that process on its head. And now we're inviting ourselves to notice what we've been seeing, but really notice it. It's mm -hmm. like, I see you there. Is this making sense? Yeah. So we're actually acknowledging it. And by so doing, we're giving it life. And it'll, what we're acknowledging is saying, well, I don't know what this looks like at the moment. I, I don't know what it means. I don't know what you call it. But there's a whole long line of, of actions you could take. Once you've got that, there's a reason for us to have a conversation that I could run with. I could take that content out and say, well, here's the things that are really essential for me in my next role. I don't know what it's called, but this is stuff that I really feel called and to do. And it will start to show up. And then you allow people to respond to what they're hearing. You're giving them tons of things to react to. Everything they put their hands in, there's, they either get traction or purchase. Now you've got collaborators in helping you figure this out. Trying to do this on your own? Nah. Way too much heavy lifting.